In today's video, we continue with the web chat application. We start by implementing Spring Security and a custom login page. Before diving into the code we first look at the result. I started the web chat application and opened it in two browser windows. In the first window we are going to log in with the username, bill and password, password. As you can see, now we don't have to enter a username to connect to the WebSocket server. We take the name from Spring Security. Now we can log into the second window with username, Steve and password, password. Again we can connect with the username of Spring Security. Otherwise the application works as in the previous video, nothing has been changed to the rest of the code. We are just going over the code that was modified in this video. If you want to see the rest of the code you should take a look at the previous video. We start in the POM XML file. We added the Spring Boot Starter Security Dependency. Furthermore, we added the new class Security Config. With the configuration annotation. The first bean is Security Filter Chain. With a permit all for the root. Login. Login Error. Main JS. Main CSS and login style CSS. All other endpoint are protected. The session management configuration is to allow a user to log in only once. The login configuration is for a custom login page. Finally, the logout configuration. The second bean is the in-memory user details manager. With three users. We chose the in-memory user details manager to keep the code simple and uncluttered. The last Spring Boot class to be modified is the web controller. We added that extra endpoint next to the new index page. Login. Login error with the ability to pass the errors to the page. And web chat. This is the former index page we extended with authentication. That way we can pass the Spring Security username to the web page. The next block of code is the front end part. The new index page is a simple welcome page with a login button. The web chat page is the former index page that has been changed in a few places. The section to enter a username has been removed. We only have the connect and disconnect buttons. The username is automatically populated from security. To pass the username from Timeleaf to a JavaScript variable we have the following piece of code. You can find this on the Timeleaf website. The main JS file is modified a little bit in the input field part. The event listener has been removed and the username now appears directly on the page. The last block is the custom login page. With an input field for the username. Password. And a login button. And the style file to style the login page. Thanks for watching this video and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel.